Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to usher you in through the weekend. It's going to be a great weekend. Um, MCAT's been doing a couple live streaming of some sports happening this weekend as well. Tonight, we'll be doing the uh, Sentinel High School football game. Um, live starting around 7 p.m. on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. You can check it out on our Facebook page. And if you miss it live, you can watch it anytime in any of our past games on our Facebook page. So you can check all that out and more. But I got a lot of stuff to talk about today, so I'm going to get right into it. Uh, the weather, it's looking uh, colder and colder. But today you can expect uh, it's going to be mostly sunny today with highs into the 70s. So today and Saturday looks like it's going to be pretty good for most of the day. Saturday night you can expect 30% uh, chances of showers happening with Sunday with the highs of 69 and highs of 60s going into next week. Um, speaking of weather, uh, Hurricane Florence is hitting um, South Carolina pretty hard, um, but of course it went from a Category 4 storm to a Category 2 storm in the last uh, 48 hours. But luckily for them, um, well, not luckily for them, sorry, I probably shouldn't say that because Hurricane Florence is looking to soak up much of the states of South Carolina, forecasters say. Florence is a Category 2, but when it comes to a slow-moving storm, averaging about 6 miles per hour. About an hour ago, North Carolina is uh, starting to see uh, this slow-moving system with winds up to 85 miles per hour. There's still a threat from rising tides and reports of people fleeing to rooftops to escape high floodwaters. The storm surge that hit the new burn is approximately 2 feet higher now than it was during Hurricane Irene seven years ago. More than 100 people have been rescued and 400,000 people rep reports of power outages have been confirmed in South Carolina alone and almost 20,000 people in 157 uh, shelters currently. After uh, making landfall, Florence Center is expected to slide us south a bit Pressing, uh, passing below uh, Wilmington and uh, steaming into South Carolina just above uh, nearby Myrtle Beach. By that point, it could still be carrying hurricane force winds, uh, the weather services say. In uh, local news, University of Montana Grizzly running back uh, Jer Jeremy Cahoon on Wednesday was given a 24-month deferred sentence along with 100 hours of community service with a $500 fine for misdemeanor assault charges stemming from a fight outside a bar in Missoula in May. Um, Calhoun, who uh, would would be who would also be suspended for a third game, will also have a penalty of $9,800. Uh, $62.67. There was a back and forth. Uh, defense and pro prosecutors saying that the justice system has been harder on football players in the city of Missoula since the release of Crack John Cracker's book, Missoula Rape and the Justice System, in 2015. Cahoon also faces disorderly conduct citation in Missoula Municipal Court, over which Beal is a uh, presiding in that case, uh, who also accused of yelling profane language in public and calling a woman um, a female dog. He pleaded not guilty in, to the charge on August 31st, and of course his next hearing is set for October 25th. Of course, as you uh, might not be able to hunt grizzlies this season, a judge extends an order to block the hunting of grizzly bears for another two weeks. The U.S. Fish Wildlife Service has declared grizzly bears in the 9,209-square-mile uh, 9, Greater Yellowstone ecosystem of Montana, Wyoming, and I had overcovered in 2017, that past management of those grizzlies to the state wildlife agencies, Idaho and Wyoming officials set grizzly hunting seasons for the fall. Montana's Fish Wildlife Commission anticipated legal challenges and opted to delay hunting decisions. An estimated 750 uh, bears in the uh, Greater Yellowstone area could uh, persist under state agency management or to show uh, the, the delisting wouldn't uh, wouldn't damage survival prospects for grizzlies in five other recovery zones. Of course, there are uh, 1,015 grizzlies in the western parts of Montana near Bar Marshall, Glacier National Park, and Missoula Mission, Ma Ma Mission Mountains, which may be delisted later this year. So that's kind of what's happening with the hunting season. It's just getting delayed. If you want to learn more information, you can go to uh, uh, U.S. Fish Wildlife Services to find out more information. So there's a come of your uh, news at you. Here are some of your uh, new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'm going to tell you all about the movies that are coming out this weekend. They were, the, the song was Susie's favorite song, which was a mama cast to dream a little dream. <laughs> and she peeked around the corner, and there was Jody and Laurie Connor. And Susie just burst into tears. And it was just the most, and Jody started crying. And it was just, it was just a happy moment. It was just wonderful. And then uh, we had 
you know, I, the, desert, the dessert was served to us. And then Jody started playing dance music. And we got up, and the people who were in the kitchen who were helping to serve the meal all got up, and we all went with three or four couples dancing in the dining room. <laughs> I'll never forget it. It was such a wonderful, truly memorable evening. Every time there's vegetation that grows and then there are seasonal conditions that dry out the vegetation, you have uh, wildfire occurrence. We can likewise think about pers our perspective in time. If we think about the history of fire in the context of our planet, our planet is, our best estimate currently is 4.5 billion years old. Uh, pretty much as soon as we have vegetation on the land and enough oxygen in the atmosphere to support combustion, we have uh, evidence of fire. So that currently dates back to about 420 million years. So fire has been a long-standing process on the Earth. Uh, over this time period, uh, many of the plants that we know have evolved, and we ourselves, humans, have evolved. So we come on the scene here about 6 million years ago. Uh, about 400,000 years ago is when we figure out how to use fire for our own purposes. That's for cooking. And then around 50,000 years ago, humans figure out how to use fire to uh, change forage and use it to help uh, in, in hunting, and then 10,000 years ago for agriculture. Listening to the president speak, I heard his call to embody the principle of mission first, people always. I perked right up at those words. He's been saying them since the day he stepped on campus. And I'm excited we have a leader with the imperative to value human capital. I believe a place is little more than the quality of the people in it. I'm convinced this is the reason why the University of Montana in Missoula is such an amazing place to be. It's the people, the faculty, the staff, the administrators, contract professionals, adjuncts, um, lecturers, everyone here, especially the students. We all play a unique and special role, and we all pick up the mission each day and actively make the University of Montana the best place for students to learn, imagine, and grow. But the university can't only be the best place for students. The university must strive to be the best place in Montana to go to work. To be the best, it's necessary for the university to develop professional training that enables its people to better perform their work. To be the best, it's necessary to have opportunity for professional development. In order to retain our high caliber, student-centered workforce, we must have long-range goals for growth, job pathways that reward performance, and methods for acknowledging when a job is well done. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about uh, some movies that are coming out this weekend. There's a couple movies coming out this weekend. Some of them you might be excited for, others. It's kind of like, uh, so I call this one kind of like uh, the gender split weekend because there's a movie geared towards men and then there's a movie that's geared towards women. And uh, we're kicking things off with the uh, with the movie that is slated to make the most money, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's I don't know. Uh, okay, so anyways, let's kick things off with the Predator. Uh, since the plural version of Predators were already taken by another uh, excuse to capitalize on Arnold's um, famous movie, The Predator, or Predator, um, gather a bunch of actors who look like they've never actually done boot camp before, um, and then um, then take on a, an alien that's bigger and better than the previous alien. You know, they just got to go bigger with the movie franchise and an audience, but it doesn't quite follow, uh, say, the giant robot movies have. Uh, join... Um, 
a group of military men in some kind of badass uh, confirmed kill count that makes them seem even deadlier than they're supposed to be. He's like, uh, John H Hancock, 400 confirmed kills, the most deadliest man with a uh, Bowie knife and all that kind of stuff. So see all these guys kind of interact with the Predator, and the Predator is an alien who is the basically equivalent of um, a guy hunting on a nature preserve. Anyways, moving on, we got another movie. This is uh, apparently uh, from the g same people who made uh, Bridesmaid, uh, Spy, and uh, basically any of the movies that don't get as much um, screen time in terms of trailers or anything like that. I was like, I didn't even know this movie was coming out. So anyways, uh, Paul Feig, um, No Good Deed Goes Unpunished, says those people, and you can watch these people in A Simple Favor. It's a comedy, uh, so simple favors tend to get a little bit out of control in these kind of movies, so if you're like Bridesmaid, watch the director Paul Feig uh, try to make another buddy comedy that stars funny women in a comedy role, but of course sometimes it, it falls flat because you can't, you can, you can have everything right and then everything just goes wrong and this movie seems like it, well, i don't know it's 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 you know whatever whenever there is a movie like this uh like the macho predator there's always a counter opposite movie like this and speaking of other movies this is like the third option so if you don't like the whole option between uh kind of like a uh, comedy or an action movie why not go through a uh a, a movie about uh patriotism this movie follows the uh story of olympic Ronier. Luis Zamperini as, he, uh, as his time in the POW camp and on the road to recovery. But we're, we're, we're going to skip over the whole uh, World War II thing and just go right into the road of recovery. But of course, if you are somebody who is affected with PTSD or know, some, uh, or know someone, to, uh, seek help. Seek, seek help. Um, but the road to recovery isn't fast and it's not like what you see in the movies. Of course, um, uh, you know, in a lot of movies like this, the road to recovery usually takes about the runtime of the movie. So uh, while, while people in real life struggle with the horrors of combat every day, and it takes years, and some people just get a little bit better, and they just have to deal with it every single day, of course. But watch this movie if you want to see all that smushed together into a short period of time. This movie is called Unbroken, uh, Path to Redemption. All right. So... Uh, I'm going to redeem myself with a nice short film from our Saturday shorts. Uh, Saturday drop-ins have started, and if you have a kid who is age 9 to 13, roughly, you guys can come down here every single Saturday, and for only $10, your kid get to create and make cool little movies just like this. Hey. Hey. Ah! Are what you? the heck is that? Hi, are you having fun? Yeah, 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 no. Oh, well you'll have more fun if you let me climb on your head. I'm not quite so sure about that. Come on, man, just let me climb on your neck and hold you tight. It'll be like a hug for your head. Yeah.
Hello, um, 911. Uh, my friend is crazy and he is acting like a cat most of the time. Well, I don't really know what he's doing. He got a cat on his shoulder and it seemed to have killed him or something. I don't know. Uh, dude? Dude? Where are you? That cat kid wants to be a lawyer when he grows up. Moving on, let's talk about uh, some things that are happening within the city of Missoula. And of course, uh, public safety and health was the meeting that I chose to talk about today. And during the public city, uh, uh, public safety and health, they did an update for crime victim advocates um, and sexual assault victims and crim uh, crimes. Um, talk about uh, with relationship violence services. This was, fir this was the first time this department actually has the annual report since the department became a department 18 months ago. So this is their first annual report, just kind of giving a rundown of everything that uh, the department's been doing. And here's Jenny Daniel with Just Response, talks about the misconceptions people have about rape. There's a lot of rape myths. I mean, you know, we, we as a society have these rape myths and when reporters aren't aware of them, they might write about it or they might share, you know, they might think they're not sharing information, but all that's uh, identifying. So we have concerns about the identifying information. We have concerns about um, maybe excessive, and that's really subjective, but excessive information. And, um, you know, what happens mostly is that there's a chilling effect. That the people that, you know, maybe I'm a crime victim and I'm thinking about reporting, and now I'm seeing this in the paper, I'm like, oh no, I'm not going to report now. Um, another kind of flip side of it is that. Um, you know, advocates can also be aware of when the media might pick up a story. So then they can say, hey, you know, victim, this might be in the paper. You know, so to kind of prepare them, and that can help um, ease the way. Uh, and then really about relationship building, um, you know, with Dylan and then now the KGBO guys and our new, the new crime reporter, Seaborn, he, we're having a relationship between advocates and the media so that, um, you know, we recently had one with Seaborn and Rebecca, the advocate, she called him and was like, my, you know, with permission of the victim, she said, this, uh, my crime victim is having concerns about this issue and he, he changed it. He, you know, and, and listened and same with our, um, uh, with the KGVO guys, and then all the right. So um, I'm cutting her off right there. Uh, uh, but moving on, um, a lot of uh, time sexual assaults happen within partners, and while some of them may say that they just uh, should just leave them, there are, uh, there is some instances where uh, crime victim advocates work with both uh, both partners to figure out a better way to educate and go through a process to help educate the people who uh, have. Uh, sexually assaulted their partner in that regard to uh, improve their relationship. Um, there are ways uh, that people have made things work, but then again, they're there to represent the victim first and foremost. So Chantel Gaynor also talks about some of the things that happens in the media as well, because one of the biggest things that uh, tend to kind of um, go uh, been uh, is usually misrepresented uh, in the media is when there is a sexual assault, assault within the family. So here is uh, Chantel Gaynor about that. When writing about incest, they don't name the victim, but they name the family, in which case then you've named the victim. Whereas the Missoulian has a policy not to do that. And uh, it comes from, it, it's just policy, it's not in state law. And so having this kind of proactive and open relationship with your media can make all the difference for victims in a community. KGVO also has that same policy. Yep. So, I mean, like, if you ever read in a newspaper that, uh, um, like, uh, uh, like a criminal has like sexually assaulted like their niece, you know, they always hear these stories and stuff like that. And like their name is released, and then it's kind of implied that the ones that are related to them have the same name, so it's kind of hard to um, protect the victims in that instance. So a lot of times you got to be very uh, careful, especially when you're talking about the victims in media. And that's something that they're moving forward, and there's something talking about in terms of an update to kind of move, th let things go on there as well. Um, Brenna Murrell, uh, she's with Make Your Move, um, talks about uh, Make Your Move and collaborations with other within schools about consent. Because... Uh, 
you know, sex education is something that tells you about sex and, you know, some of the, you know, diseases and some of the things that ha are happening with sex, but they don't talk about healthy relationships. And this is something that Brenda Merrill is trying to, uh, has been um, spearheading with education for teachers to help teach the students and the kids about just general consent in general to expand on what it means to share and to communicate uh, your expectations. Throughout this past quarter and throughout the past year, we've been doing a lot of community events and tabling. Most recently, we uh, tabled at the Rock to Vote um, Pearl Jam concert event, um, and we're able to talk about consent with concert goers. Uh, and this upcoming weekend, we'll be tabling at the Rural, rural Oh my gosh, Roller Derby. <laughs> Ours are hard in the morning. Um, which is just another great way for us to be able to get out in the community and talk about sexual violence prevention um, in spaces where sexual violence prevention isn't the normal uh, conversation. Um, our bar work is moving forward. Uh, Imagination Brewery has expressed interest in training this fall. Um, if they do get trained, they'll be our first brewery here in Missoula that is trained. Uh, the Tavern Association is having their annual meeting here in Missoula next week, and I will be giving a breakout session training uh, to bar owners and managers across the state of Montana talking about the policy work we do with our bar training program. All right, so those are some of the things that are happening as well. Of course, Make Your Move was a, a very successful campaign that started here in Missoula and really extended throughout the nation. Of course, you might have seen some of those ads where um, – you probably see the quote which says, I just knew that she was asking for it, so I stepped in and told the guy to leave her alone. That kind of like lead, it leads up to a, a potential sexual assault, which turns out to be something that prevents sexual assault. And I think that's something that's uh, very uh, important, especially in Missoula as well, uh, moving forward. And um, of course, that's all I have to say about some of these short items in other meetings. You can check them all out by going to ci.missoula.mt.us. This is Public Safety and Health. You can see all those meetings and more by going to this wonderful, wonderful website about everything city of Missoula. But of course, if you can't find it here, you can definitely find it on MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your local source for everything MCAT related, Missoula uh, video related. So anything that's shot here um, in Missoula usually en ends up being on our channel and we shoot it from beginning to end so if you're interested in being a part of MCAT you can um, come on down here at 500 North Higgins Street 105 you can call us at 542-6228 otherwise known as 542-MCAT you can also call uh, you can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org about information about uh, upcoming events or if you want to be on my morning show you can contact us through our website at MCAT.org as well so those are some of the informational uh, things that you guys need to know um, but if you want to learn more about me and find out some videos and past interviews that I've done in the past, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wikisite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. You can also Google Wake Up Missoula and you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. All right, guys, I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to um, do some events pretty soon. So I'm going to throw it to the last time I'll be able to play this art clip from the uh, Missoula Art Museum. And this is uh, Suka Warob uh, Zemahoff's um, table at MAM.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about Friday events. There's a lot of events happening this Friday today as well. Um, there's a lot of uh, things happening this morning. Um, it's bike, but a walk and roll week with Missoula in Motion. MissoulaMotion.com is where you can go to find out more information about all these upcoming events and more. But they're doing a lot of morning free coffee for any bike riders and people who walk in the morning who take alternative transportation. So they're going to be doing this also at the Madison Street Pedestrian Bridge. Um, right now. Uh, <laughs> of course, special event, Rock and Roll Week. You can support them. Um, donuts are available as well um, during this stuff. And, you know, it's uh, basically going to be happening from 7 and 9, oh, which pretty much it's already <laughs> over. <laughs> but they ha they're doing this pretty much throughout the month. Um, Walk and Roll Week all happening um, this week as well. Uh, grant Writing Boot Camp. So if you're interested in writing a grant, right now there's a boot camp going on right now at the Best Western Plus Grant Creek Inn. Um, it's a fast, pa it's an information pa uh, packed workshop that combines lecture, group discussion, and hands-on activities to reinforce your course material. You'll learn effective strategies for researching and writing foundation grants. You'll participate with more than a dozen ex exercises and, and leave new designs and actual writing samples that can be incorporated in your next grant proposal. There's also a big grant proposal being um, issued uh, by, uh, I think it's either the League of Women Voters, but there's a, a organization that's being done through the uh, Missoula Community Foundation, a $10,000 grant. Um, so you guys can check that out if you go to Missoula Community Foundation. And that's a grant that um, you can uh, check out and learn more about as you go along. Tiny Tales and Storytime is kicking off this morning around 10.30 a.m. at the Missoula Public Library. It's a good way for kids to get involved with reading. Hands-on Science, hey, another thing to get uh, kids involved with science is Spectrum Discovery Center uh, just off their Tool Avenue Street across from DraftWorks Brewing Company starting at 11 a.m. Hands-on Science, they're doing the properties of water. Um, MCT Center Performing Arts are working with Are You Your True Self or who the world tells you to be, the uh, Andrasi, Jossels, um and the Lion, famed fable writer Aesop, uh, reminds us that being king is, uh, is the heart of who we are, no matter what our circumstances are, and no matter how bad we butcher their uh, pronunciations. Uh, the Missoula Children's Theater will present a fast-paced, funny version of Aesop's uh, classic story uh, today and tomorrow, starting today at noon at MCC Center for Performing Arts in a celebration of the annual celebration of Arts and Education Week. Um, Cribbage and Bridge, uh, if you guys are interested in playing a couple card games and just chilling out and talking, having some lunch, um, Missoula Senior Center is doing a Cribbage and Bridge um, event every uh, every week, um, starting around 12:30. Teen Writers Group are kicking off this afternoon. It's just to improve your writing skills. They have some chocolate there, and this is at Missoula Public Library, starting at 3:30 p.m. And I think the uh, youth, uh, the teen section of the library, uh, Missoula Monster Project. This is a fun project. Uh, kids get to uh, uh, work with Spark, and any given child, Missoula are teaming up to showcase the third annual Mo Missoula Monster Project. So let me tell you about this project. They have they invite kids to uh, make drawings or uh, uh, art in terms of what their little monster is all about and then uh, professional artists come in and then they give it a whole nother uh, step up and they evolve the art into something very special that the kids get to see and it'll be an art installation at the Zootown Arts Community Center. It's going to be fun and it starts today at 3.30 p.m. at the Zootown Arts Community Center. So bring your kid. You can check all that out by going to Zootown Arts Community Center or zac.org. Holistic uh, content Contentment show and fundraiser at base. Uh, this is a fundraiser show and silent auction for the holistic contentment. Uh, they'll have uh, two comedians, Michael Beers and Charlie McCorn, along with a singing and ukulele play by Ari Grouge and a live uh, painting by Tara Hibbard. There will be door prizes, beverages, kombucha from Back to the Mother. I never heard of that. Snacks and silent auction to wonderful art by local Missoula artists. You can come out and it's going to be at base and it starts at 4.30 p.m. It's $8 in advance, $9 at the door, all ages welcome, and if you're under 12, you get in free. So it's a nice family event that starts as soon as school gets out. School starts, but MCT uh, Center for Performing Arts, starting at 4.30, they're doing their uh, Arts and Education Week. It's an opportunity for Missoulians to begin aware of the community arts opportunity available for their children during the upcoming school year. So this is kind of like a meet and greet at MCT Center for Performing Arts, and the uh, parents get to check out all the upcoming camps, days off camps, and whenever there's a day off from school, the uh, MCT hosts, hosts a camp as well. 
Greek festival is happening this weekend as well, kicking off today and going on also tomorrow. Um, Greek Orthodox Church, uh, 301 South 6th Street. Um, are you getting excited for this year's Greek festival filled with all the Greek food, music, dance, drinks, and all around fun you can handle? You're, you're just... Uh, have to wait a little bit longer. Their priest announced the, Mont- uh, the Montana's Greek Festival will return for this fifth year uh, today and tomorrow. So you can check all that out starting at 5 p.m. at the Greek or- Orthodox Church off of 6th Street. Art talk with a ceramicist, uh, Michael McConnell. Uh, Lake Missoula Tea Company is kicking things off with exp- uh, exploring uh, surface variations while searching for the right feel for that keeps one researching for a certain mug day after day. During this conversation, McConnell will give us a intimate view of his pottery process. So it is a fun little uh, uh, event that's happening tonight, uh, tonight at Lake Missoula Tea Company. They invite artists um, who like to make uh, teapots or anything that represents tea. Uh, the David Simmons Band for Project Tomorrow Montana Public House. They're doing a, a suicide prevention or, um, organization with Project Tomorrow, and this is going to be uh, happening at 6 p.m. Performances start at 7 p.m. Uh, Simmons, a former Missoula resident, is conducting a workshop earlier this week at Willard High School to give students the chance to tell their stories through music. And that'll pretty much wrap up your uh, Friday. Um, so if you're interested in doing some fun things tonight as well, there's a big side doc film outdoor screening of Mountain, which will be happening at Bob Ward's in Missoula, and it's part of the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. So they get a little taste of some documentary films just before February when they kick off their documentary film festival for this year. Dead Hipster presents I Love the 90s Dance Party. Uh, if you like the 90s and you like 90s music, well, get your hoopa stank on and go to the Badlander tonight. Thank Thank Gin. It's Friday. Monk's Bar is doing apparently a gin special drinks or what happened at the bat line at the Monk's Bar. Uh, Cash for Junkers is going to be in Union Club and it's going to be some fun dance music on the Union Club. So where the old and the young come to hang out and that's at the Union Hall. Okay. So anyways, I got another art clip for you guys and then I'm going to talk about some Saturday events and your weekend events as well because there's a lot going on because we have Pet Fest this weekend as well. I just want to throw it to, uh, I do have a new art clip for you guys and this is from Steve Hunt which will be at the MAM until December 6th. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Saturday events. Uh, Farmer's Market is still going strong and it'll be going on well until October. So you can check all that out at the People's Market that is uh, off Pine Street. You can go to the uh, Railroad Street and go to buy the Red X's and go to the Farmer's Market, the old school Farmer's Market. And then of course the uh, Clark Fork, I mean the, uh, yeah, Clark Fork River Market right on underneath the Higgins Street Bridge. Uh, free Cycles Climate Ride starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning I mean, as the Free Cycles Climate Ride aims to bring people together to ride bicycles and raise awareness about the importance of environmental stewardships. Participants will have the option of doing a 75-mile loop highlighting some of the best cycling near Missoula. The 20-mile loop will start at noon and take riders on a rump- rompous tour of Missoula and the Bitter River. Finally, there will be kids course at 5 p.m. for distant cyclers of tomorrow. And they uh, bike together for a greener planet, and this is happening tomorrow. 
Oh, jeez. Sorry about that. Ugh. Weird indigestion. Uh, spontane spontaneous construction, otherwise known as SponCon, is back at Home Resource starting at, at 9 a.m. It goes on pretty much all day at Home Resource. They get a bunch of organizations from all around Missoula just making all sorts of wacky, crazy things from the resources resources at Home Resource. So Spontaneous Construction Missoula's annual festival is a creative reinvention, is a building contest and a celebration of reuse with great Missoula bands, food, and free activities for all ages. Teams complete to build their greatest creations using any of materials available at Home Resource. And you can find out more information at homeresource.org slash spawncon. PetFest. Hey, guys. I told you. PetFest is coming up, and I had our guest from a, a week ago. And it's the 13th annual PetFest. It's going to be at the Missoula County Fairgrounds. You can't miss it. And if you stick around long enough, you'll be able to go to the Hellgate Roller Girls. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. PetFest educates and entertains um, the public about the wonderful world of pets. It's a day filled with, many, with family ori uh, oriented events uh, featuring entertainment, contests, special attractions, and pet adoptions. PetFest is also an outstanding shopping venue of products and services pertaining to pets and families. And last year, only one pet went without being adopted. But of course, that pet left a little bit early than the rest of the other pets. So who knows what could have happened. So it's gonna, it's a great annual event that happens. And this is the second year they're going to be at the Missoula uh, Fairground. So you can check all that out. It starts at 9 a.m. And it goes until about 3 p.m. Um, yeah, Secret Seconds, Thrift Store Grand Reopening. Uh, so they're doing a re reopening. Um, they're going to be doing this. Uh, f uh, Big Dipper Ice Cream will be, be there from 3 to 6 p.m. And they open at 10 a.m. It's going to be at it's all proceeds and purchases at the YWCA, uh, at the uh, Secret Seconds go to the YWCA. YWCA runs it with life-changing programs and services for local families in crisis. A very hungry caterpillar. Missoula Insectarium hosts a weekly uh, workshop events and crafts things for kids to get one of the hungriest herbivores on the planet has, the ca has to be the caterpillar. Join us as we learn about caterpillars, choose their meals, and why they eat so much. They'll also be creating adorable caterpillar necklaces to bring home with the kids. And that starts at 12 tomorrow. And also tomorrow, 1 p.m., MCAT's Saturday drop-ins happen every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Aged kids, uh, aged um, 9 to 13 artists. Um, if you have a kid um, or know of any kids um, between the ages of 9 and 13, uh, we do stop animation. We do basic movie creations. Uh, my Saturday short that I just showed you is a short movie that we made in a half an hour. So it's a nice little fun thing to do for kids. Um, we let the kids create, and uh, if the, anything... What I do is I try to focus them or refocus them back on task. That's the most I ever put into it. Um, Missoula Maggot Rugby. Um, so if you want to drop off your kids and play some rugby with the boys in this, or some of the girls, who knows? In the spring of 1976, a group of University of Montana rugby players, student for life, finally graduated or gave up aspirations of higher learning. Faced with the harsh realities of graduation and lack of a rugby team, they formed uh, Old Boys Side of the Summer. They named UM Old Boys, might have been a Adopted had it not been for the typical insensitive Canadians who <laughs> referred, this is what they say, who referred to the new team as uh, that bunch of maggots from Montana. The name stuck and that had always been worn with pride by one of the top rugby teams of the Northwestern United States. And they're going to be doing that. Uh, it's going to be Missoula Maggot Rugby Football Club, and it's going to be Maggot Rugby Park, which is usually at the uh, Fort Missoula near Community Medical. So you can check all that out. It starts tomorrow at 1 p.m. Hellgate Roller Derby, their first home bout. I told you I was going to talk about them. 7 p.m. Uh, they're also do doing the Littles as starting as early as 5, 6 p.m. They're going to be doing some rugby. They have a young girl, so if you have, you, if you have a young girl who is who you, who you think is really tough or you want to tough them, tough them up, they got that uh, Hellgate Hellions playing before the Hellgate Roller Der Derby bout, which starts at 7 p.m. at the Missoula Fairground. It's season eight, bout three. Um, it's, they're about wrapping up their season. They, their us season usually runs during the summer, and they usually bring it back home for uh, the last couple shows as well. Um, or oh, why am I still calling it a show? It's a sports event. It's full contact sports, which has women in uh, roller blades rolling around a circle trying to pass each other. And you got to watch that hip check. $10 tickets are available at the door. Students and seniors get $8, and kids under 12 are free with an adult. Those, uh, of course, those are some of your events that are happening. If you want to learn more, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net. But I'm going to swing on by. I'm going to go check out some of the late-night events that are happening. Salsa 406, Dark Horse Bar is going to be playing some salsa music, DJ music at the Badlander. 
monks are going to be doing some DJ dance music. Um, there's Charles Ellsworth will be at VFW. And Joan Zen Band will be at Union Club. So go listen to her whale at the Union Club. MissoulaEvents.net is your local resources resource for everything that's downtown Missoula. I like to just refer to this, get a couple snippets from it, but you can go hear it yourself to check out more of the uh, specified events that may pertain to you. All you got to do is go to MissoulaEvents.net for more information. But if you're also interested in finding out more information about me, all you got to do is look up Wake Up Missoula. So for Wake Up Missoula, I hope you guys have a wonderful, 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 wonderful weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. We're going to be live streaming the Sentinel High School football game um, at Grizzly Washington Stadium tonight as well. So you can check that out on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. But for, for Wake Up Missoula and for MCAT and for all of Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you guys for joining me and have a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.